I'm together with everybody and I hope I'll be a blessing to you in the name of Jesus. Let us read in the book of Matthew chapter 28 verse 1 to 10. The Bible reads, the resurrection of Christ. The resurrection of Christ. In the end of the Sabbath, that's what it's that. In the end of the Sabbath, I'll be reading with a comment, comment so that we can uh, follow me clearly, so that we can follow each other properly. In the end of the Sabbath, the regular weekly Sabbath, which was every Saturday, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, this was just before daylight of Sunday morning, Jesus rose from the dead sometime after sunset on Saturday evening. The Jews began the new day at sunset instead of midnight, as we do presently. Come Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the scepter. They wanted to put spices on the body of Christ. And behold, there was a great earthquake. Present the second earthquake with the first taking place when Christ died. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven, was probably observed by the Roman soldiers who alone witnessed it and gave the account and came and rolled back the stone from the door. Christ had already risen from dead and had left the tomb when the stone was rolled away. His glorified body was not restricted by obstacles and sat upon it. This was done as a show of triumph. In other words, the death was vanquished. His countenance was like lightning, and his remnant white as snow. There is no evidence that any of the women or disciples saw this glorious coming of the angel. However, the next verse tells us that the Roman guards did see it and were terrified. And for the fear of him, the angel, the keepers, the guards, did shake and became as dead men. Inasmuch as this happened at night, the situation was even more frightful. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, This was just before dawn and after the soldiers had run away. Do not fear, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. The angel now uses the, these words, crucified. In a most glorious manner, it is now the power of God and the wisdom of God. He is not here. It is the beginning of the most glorious statement that could ever fall upon the ears of mere mortals. For he is risen. A dead and risen Savior is the life and substance of the gospel. And he said, the angel brought to the attention of women the fact that Christ had stated several times that he would be crucified and would rise from the dead. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. They were looking for a corpse, but instead would find a risen Lord. They were looking for a tomb containing a corpse, but instead would find it empty. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen, he is risen from the dead. The disciples should have been the ones telling others, but because of unbelief, the women will tell them, this is the greatest message that humanity has ever received. And behold, he goes before you into Galilee. There you shall, see, shall ye see him. He would reveal himself to whom and to where he so desired. Lo, I have told you, guarantees the certitude of his action. And they departed quickly from the scripture. They had actually gone into the burial chamber and had seen with their own eyes that Jesus was not there. With fear and great joy, this was a healthy fear which every believer ought to have and as an understanding, there was great joy. And did run to bring his disciples' word. They did run because they had a message to tell. And what a message it, it was. This would be the greatest word the disciples would ever hear. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them. This was not the first appearance of Jesus that being to Mary Magdalene, saying, All hell, actually meant all joy. 
And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. They would find that they were touching a human body of flesh and bone, and that it was not a parishion or ghostly figure. They knew he had been raised from the dead. Still, they were not at all certain as to what was meant by that. His appearance to them, with them touching him, removed all doubts as to what the resurrection meant. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid, if definitely is understandable that they were afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. Means more than merely an appearance. Actually, he would also appear to them in Jerusalem, even proclaiming great truth. John, in the last chapter of his book, gives the appearance in Galilee in detail. Amen. That's the word of God in Matthew chapter 28, verse 1 to 10. And uh, I want us just to go and read in the Luke chapter 24. And uh, we, I was supposed to read from verse 1 to 10 as well, but I will read only from 5 and then 6. So I will read from 5 to 7. In, Math, in Luke chapter 24, Verse 5 up to 7. So the Bible reads in the book of Ma Luke chapter 24, verse 5 to 7. On the top it says the resurrection as well. So it says, And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? That's what I wanted you to understand. Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And the third day rise again. May God bless his words. Let us bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, I come at your throne this morning. As I am approaching at your table, Lord, I praise you and I exhort you because you are the God who has given us the privilege to be in your presence this morning. As those who are under the sound of my voice, I bless them and I pray that they shall be attentive and listen only to you speaking to them. Father, touch the life of somebody wherever they are, that Lord, they should, O oh God, be blessed and have, O oh God, whatever you have planned for them to have this morning. As I am speaking, Lord, let, O oh God, my wisdom should be shattered, my intellig intelligence should be shattered, and only you, God, you should be in control of this platform. I take possession of this place where I am in the name of Jesus. And I pray that, Lord, you alone you shall glorify your name in this place. In the name of Jesus. And everybody say it, amen and amen. As we have read in the book of Matthew and also of Luke, Matthew chapter 28 and the Luke chapter 24, the Bible has spoken to us concerning Mary Magdalene and the other Marys who in the morning of Sunday, they wanted to go and anoint the body of Christ. That means they were, they were going to see the corpse of Jesus Christ in the tomb. Knowing that they saw Jesus Christ being buried in that tomb and that they have to take care of it each and every day because to them it was that everything which Jesus told them could not have come to pass because they knew that that's the end of everything. So they had to take care of their master. As they were approaching the tomb, they could see that the stone which they were thinking that who is going to roll that stone away from, from, the, from the tomb for us. Seeing that the stone is no more there, the stone has been rolled away and there is no more an obstacle to them. They rush to see what is going on. And when they reached there, they could find that the stone really wasn't 
on the tomb. It was rolled away. And to their surprise, they find that there is there were people, there were people who made them, who, who sat on the stone, on top of the stone, telling them about the good news which they didn't even expect. Because what they expect is for them to see the cup of Jesus Christ. For them to find the cups of Jesus Christ and anoint the cups of Jesus Christ to keep it fresh and normal. And that's why they were surprised to see that. Instead of them seeing the cops, they could see people sat on the top of the stone and give them the good news, what they didn't expect that may have it. Take that be the glory. And then, when they reached on that extent, they were astonished by hearing the message which these people were telling them. And these people were angels of God. These angels of God, they were giving them a good news. The good news which their ear wanted to hear. They told them, why are you looking the living among the dead? Why are you looking those who are alive in the midst of the dead? Have you forgotten what he has been telling you? Have you forgotten what he has been speaking each and every day in your lives? Have you forgotten every word he has pronounced in your lives each and every day? That I, a son of man, shall be delivered to the sinful people. Who is going to torture me? Who is going to do anything to me? And then kill me and put me on this, on this, on the, on the wood. After wood, they will put me in the tomb. And on the third day, I will rose again. They forget, completely forget of every word Jesus Christ was telling them. Instead, they went to the tomb to look for Jesus so that they can anoint his body. And when they heard about this message, and these two men told these ladies, telling them that go now and tell his disciples that the person they want to see here is no more here. He is risen. He is alive. He is no more in the tomb. He is not dead anymore. He was, yes, but he is alive. So you shouldn't be looking for a living person among the dead. Because he is alive. He is alive. He is not dead. Go and tell his disciples. Mary Magdalene and his, and his friend Mary, they went running fast to go and see the disciples. Among of the disciples was Peter. So they told Peter about the message which they received from the angels. Peter, without taking time, he rushed to the tomb just to go and see. When Peter reached there, he realized that it was the truth the tomb was empty. And the stone was rolled away. And the tomb was completely empty. He rushed in and entered and see. He wanted to see by himself. He wanted, he wanted to touch where Jesus was laid. He wanted to see exactly is he risen or not. Are these women telling me the truth or not? My, my. What a misery of time. A man who has walked with Jesus. A man who has ate with Jesus. A man who has been going around with Jesus. The man who has seen what Jesus has been capable of doing. The man who has known Christ for more than for more than more than years. He has been with Jesus for longer than anybody in the world. And he himself could not believe of the word Jesus was telling him each and every day. Just to imagine how this man could react. When he heard about Jesus being raised from dead. He is not dead. He is alive. You shouldn't be looking a living among the dead. And you know, I titled this message. Where are we looking for Jesus? Where are we looking for Jesus? Where are we looking for Jesus? 
in this world before even today because this coronavirus has come 2020 before 2020 2020 all these years i've seen children of god i've seen people of god i've seen those who are called by the name of god when they are looking for jesus when they are looking for miracles, when they are looking for healing, when they are looking for so many things in their lives, they don't know exactly where to look for Jesus. They go and look for Jesus among the dead, not knowing that Jesus is alive, not knowing that Jesus is alive. He is not dead. But do you know where people usually go and look for Jesus? Here Jesus is telling them, tell them, I'll go and read in Matthew because Matthew is telling us exactly the word I want them, to, I want you guys to hear. It says, seven, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goes before you into Galilee. There you shall see him. That's seven. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goes before you into Galilee. There shall you see him. But today, people, they are the one looking for Jesus. And where are they looking for Jesus? They are looking for Jesus in the places where maybe he is not there. They are looking for miracles where even Jesus is not there. They are looking for their breakthrough where even Jesus is not there. They are looking for their, for their problems to be solved where Jesus is not there. Some people can pay their um, transport money to go somewhere to look for Jesus. Some people can live from certain place to go to certain place to look for Jesus, to look for miracles, to look for wonders, to look for healings, to look for so many things. They're forgetting that Jesus is the one who is with them. Jesus is the one who said, I shall meet you there in Galilee. You shouldn't come to look for me, um, uh, the, me, a living person among the dead. What are you looking for? Where you're going? What exactly are you fetching in the places you go and pay money? You came from London, you go to America. You, you, you came from America, you go to Africa. You, you are misplacing yourself for every day. You are going here and there looking for Jesus, looking for miracles, looking for the things which God has already placed it in your hands. But you don't know exactly what you have in you. Because Jesus is the one who said, I shall meet you there because he knows you. He knows your place. He knows your address. Do you know why you are still looking for Jesus? Do you know why you are still looking for the miracles? Do you know why you're still looking for the healing? Do you know why you're still going around and around, touching here and there? Because you don't know that Jesus is alive. You don't know that Jesus is risen. You don't know that Jesus is capable of being with you where you are. You don't know that Jesus knows your address. You don't know that Jesus knows your name. Because if you know that Jesus knows your name, if you know that Jesus knows your address, if you know that Jesus died for you, if you know that Jesus was raised from dead because of you, if you know these things, you will not be going around spending a lot of money looking for Jesus. Because Jesus is where you are. Jesus is in your house. Jesus is in your workplace. Jesus is where you belong. It's where you are. Wherever you are now at this moment, that's where Jesus is. You don't need to replace yourself from here to go to a certain place to go and look for Jesus. Do you know what is happening now? It's to tell you that Jesus is everywhere. Now all the buildings are closed. You are putting cloth to go and show yourself in the churches. 
You were putting clothes to go and show yourself that, no, this is the way I look when I'm, I'm, I'm putting on my cloth. But today, it's not that time anymore because he's telling you that I am alive. I'm not dead anymore. You shouldn't be looking me among the dead because I am a risen Christ. And everything you're looking for is in you because I am in you. I know your name. I know your address. I know where you are. And you shouldn't come to look for me because I am everywhere. In your house, I am there. In the place where you want to look for me, maybe I am not there. I'm already, I'm, I'm already alive. I'm not dead. You're not praising the dead God. You're not glorifying the dead God. You are not exalting the dead God. You are exalting the living God. The one who was and who is and who will still be there forever and ever. He knows where you are. He knows what you want. He knows what you're looking for. Even before you start asking. But the problem of nowadays, people doesn't know exactly what God can do in their lives. People doesn't know exactly that Jesus knows the address where he knows you, where he can find you. He will find you wherever you are. Even if you are under the pit where the devil has bind you. Even if you are under the curse where people has put you in. Or maybe witchcraft sorcerers have bind you somewhere. But Jesus knows where you are. And he said he's going to find you there. That's where he's going to meet you. Because he knows where you are. He came to set the captive free. He died for you to be free. He died for you to be free, complete free. Not touching here and there to see where God is. Not going from place to places to seek for God. Not leave, leaving America to go to Nigeria. Leaving America to go to Congo. Leaving America to go to London. Leaving London to go to South Africa to look for the healing. While you are leaving the healing in your house. While you are leaving the healing in your places. Why? Why? Why you are leaving the living the, the, the healing in every place you are coming from. Because Jesus is everywhere. You have left Jesus in your house and you are going without Jesus into, the, into Africa. Into America. You are going some other places, leaving God in your house. And you are saying that I am looking for Jesus. I want healing. I want miracles. I want this and that. I have been in this sickness for many years. I have been suffering for many years. And I have heard a certain pastor who knows how to preach. Who knows how to heal. He prays to God. God listens to him. What about you? Are you not the child of Abraham? Are you not the descendants of Abraham? Are you not the one who was chosen to be the, the, God, the God's child? He says, call upon me and I shall answer you. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Seek and you will find. You don't know how to seek and that's why you can't find. You don't know how to knock and that's why the door can never be opened to you. You don't know how to ask and that's why you are not being given. If you know how to ask, you will not leave your house and go to America. You will not, go, you will not leave your house and go to South Africa. You will not leave your house and go to Nigeria to look for Christ. Because Christ is where you are. Your miracle is in there where you are. In your house. Your wonders is waiting for you in the house. Your breakthrough is waiting for you in the house. You need that in your house because Jesus is the head of your family. Jesus is the head of your house. Jesus he is supposed to be the leader of your house. He is supposed to be the number one of everything you do in your life. Because he is saying, go and tell my disciples. I shall meet them in Galilee. That's where they shall see me. That means he knows where you are. That's why he left you. But do you know why you are going around and around? Because you have left the place where Jesus left you. You have come out of the place where Jesus left you. Because you want to look for Jesus some other places. Jesus is alive. You shouldn't be looking him among the dead. And wherever you go there, you spend money. First of all, your ticket money, your hotel, and the uh, 
the offering you're going to give there, whatsoever you may spend there, everything. And if you calculate all that thing, you spend a lot of money and you come back without even healing, without even breakthrough, without even anything. And then you come back to the same square root one. So it was like you were in the wilderness as the children of Israel. They were coming from Egypt. Going around and around, they find themselves on the same place. Why? Because they didn't know where to look for Jesus. They didn't allow Jesus to lead them. They wanted themselves to lead themselves. As you are now, you are looking for yourself to lead yourself. You don't want Jesus to lead you. You don't want Jesus to know where you are. You want you to look for Jesus in the places where he can never be found. You didn't hear me that. Somebody didn't hear that. You left your house. Because you heard that a certain pastor is in London. Maybe you live in Manchester. Maybe you live in Wigan. Maybe you live in some other places in Newcastle. And you heard that a certain pastor who does miracles has just arrived in London. Let me leave La Manchester whatsoever, wherever you are. And you're coming to London to receive miracles and wonders with the same man of God who has just come from some places. And that man, his name is so, 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 so. He does miracles in the name of Jesus Christ. He is a man. As you are a man. You come here, you spend money, you come and you you pay hotel and things like that. You went there, the man prayed for you because you came from far. You came here. He prayed for you. He prayed, he prayed, he prayed, and sometimes you waste you you wasted all that money and you reach there and that man didn't even touch you. Because he's a man, he cannot see everywhere. Look how people, what word should I say? Should I say what? I don't know what word should I, t I call you because it's like you don't, you, don't, you don't think. The money you are leaving your house to go and, see, and, and receive miracles from is the man, mere human being, a person who didn't die for you, a person who has no power at all. He has the grace of God upon him. Yes. As you have the grace of God upon your life. There is no difference between you and him. There is no difference between you and me. Yes, I am a man of God. Yes, I am anointed by God. Yes, I can pray for you just to assist you to pray. But I got no power to do anything. It's only Jesus who has the power to do anything. Because he is the one who died for you at the cross. He is the one who on the third day rose again. And today I'm telling you he is alive. And that person is the one who heals you. Who can make breakthrough in your life. Who can move mountains of your life. Who can break through everything in your life. Who can give you whatever you're looking for in life. Not me. Why? Because the grace I have from God, the same grace you have from God, the power I may have in God, the same power you may have in God, the same privileges I may have with God, the same privileges you may have with God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hello? Baba Jambo Jambo sana Baba Bari Jambo ya ni mwanangu Habari Pale ya ni Jambo Jambo habari enu Mzuri mungo vya Bazima paka mwe Uko Uko kwenye live Mzuri kufuwa sana enu Uko uko live kwenye Kwenye... Rezo yuko fujo sana nini? Eo, niju uko live kwenye TV Na tunaubiri katika TV Sasa sijui kama tunaweza kuitana badai Au inabidi unakita mbato ya tata kusema Hello? 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 Yeah? Hmm? 
Eh, niko kwenye live hapa huko kwenye live sijui kama unaweza kuzungumza kidogo kwa ajili tu kwenye live hapa yuko bia na nadini haya basi mtakuita baadaye tutaongea hayo mambo kwa ajili niko katika nani okay i've lost that one amen 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 so what was i saying i was saying this When we are looking for God we shouldn't be looking for Jesus the places where we think we may find Jesus because Jesus is everywhere he knows where you are he knows your address he knows where to find you as he was telling Mary Magdalene and the Marys Go and tell my disciples that I shall meet them in Galilee. That's where they shall see me. Because that's the address where Jesus wanted them to be. Sometimes you find yourself on the wrong address where Jesus didn't want you to be. Why? Because you are looking for Jesus on the wrong place. You are looking for Jesus on the places where Jesus wanted that he want you to look for don't go back to the tomb where Jesus is risen you can never look for the living among the dead the pastors you went to you are leaving certain places to go to certain places just for the prayers the same prayer you can do it in your house only have faith because let me tell you the secret of the work of the cross the secret of the work of the cross is that jesus went at the cross and died for you and when he died for you before he died you were supposed to go to the temple with your sacrifice give to the high priest and the high priest should present it in front of God but when Jesus died that thing must stop you don't need to look for the man of God you may need guidance yes but you don't need for them to pray for the miracles of your life because when Jesus died on the cross the curtain of the temple was ripped from top to bottom into pieces two pieces to tell you that now the access is free for you not to look to go through somebody but for you to go straight to him and tell him what you want that's the mystery of the cross giving you access in the presence of God giving you access to the most high God giving you access to the living God giving you access to the one who died for you at the cross giving giving you access to your miracles giving you access to your breakthrough giving you access to your to your to your things which you are looking for in life the healing whatsoever you're looking for if you want to break through if you want the mountains in your in your life to be moved away it's through Christ not through another man of God not through the high priest because that curtain was ripped from top to bottom because of your access that's the mystery of Christ, of, of the cross he died for you to have 100% access in the presence of god he wanted you not to have an obstacle for you to come to Christ he wanted you not to have excuses that i couldn't come to you because of this and that that you shouldn't have excuses that i couldn't hear your word because of this and that because he has granted you access in his presence whether a woman or a man whether young or old whether poor or rich 
You have an access in the presence of God 24 7. You don't have access in the presence of God because of me. You don't have access in the presence of God because of a certain man of God with a, with a, with a name about, above all other people in the, in the world. You don't need access in the presence of God because of a certain prophet. You don't need an access of, from, to God because of a certain evangelist. You don't need access to God because of the name of a certain bishop. But you have access to God because of your own name. Because he has given you that. Because he has given you that authority. He did it when he finished the work of the cross. He did it when he was raised from dead on the third day. And I am telling you the good news today. That he is alive. Stop looking Christ. Who is the living among the dead. Stop looking for Christ. Who is, the li who is the living among the dead? Where are you looking for Christ? You need to know that Jesus is in your house. You need to know that Jesus is where you are. You need to know that Jesus is inside you. You need to know that Jesus is whenever you call him, he's going to be there for you. The only thing he's asking for you to, to do is for you to live for God. Is for you to live for Christ. Is for you to seek him first. Seek him in truth and in spirit. He died for you. And he has risen for you. He is alive for you. He's not alive for something else, but he is alive because of you. From now onwards, you need to know that. When I need Jesus, I just need to call and he shall answer me. You have to have confidence in this person. Because he loves you. I spoke on Friday. I spoke on Friday about something. The people of the world, they may pretend to love you, but they have the limit. Their limit will reach to the place where there is laws. I said it on Friday because of this time we are, where there is corona. People are in the hospital. They can never be visited with their relatives. Why? Because it's restricted. They don't want to, be, to catch up the disease. If they come, they'll catch up the disease. They cannot come to you. That means their love has been limited. But do you know the person who is with you? On the bed of the hospital where you are. Glory be to God. I remember one thing. I went to visit my children yesterday. Do you know what happened? I went to visit my children. But I couldn't approach them. I was with them two meters every time. Why? My love was limited. But there is a certain person who has the love abundant, who can never fear a coronavirus, who will approach you despite the situation. I couldn't approach my children because I feared that I may have the infection without knowing because I work at a hospital. So I have to protect my children so that they shouldn't approach me for the fear of contracting the disease. Now, this is what I was telling you that we have the limitation in our lives as people, as human beings. So you shouldn't be looking for people to give you a solution. 
You shouldn't look looking for men of God to give you solutions. Men of God are there to guide you. Men of God are there to lead you to not for you not to go astray. But they are not there to give you answers and solutions. The only person who have answers and solutions of your life is God, the Son of the Living God, Jesus Christ Himself. That's the one who has answers. That's the one who has solution. That's the one who has everything you are looking for. The Lion of the Tribe of Judah. He is the answer to every questions you may have in your life. Where are you looking for Jesus? My brothers, my sisters, where are we looking for Jesus? Because Jesus knows where you are. Jesus knows your address. Jesus knows your name. Jesus knows you. And he said, I choose you before you were even formed in the womb of your mother. Glory to God. My, my, my. Hallelujah. He knew you. If he knew you, why are you looking for Jesus everywhere? Why are you going miles and miles to look for Jesus? Why are you spending a lot of money looking for Jesus? This certain woman who was 12 years with the problem of blood was looking for healing everywhere. And he spent a lot of money while Jesus was just there. And do you know what he did at the end? He went and just touched the end of his garment. And everything was stopped. Instantly. You may be the same woman looking for the healing in the name of Jesus, some other places. Wow, the healing is just with you. That same person who healed that woman for 12 years. Can heal you today. Can give you a breakthrough today. Can remove the mountains in your life. Because he's capable of doing that. Jesus is capable of doing it. It's only Jesus. Nobody else. And he is alive. Don't start looking for Jesus where you may not find him. In the men of God, some of them, they don't have Jesus. They have experience. They remain with experience. But Jesus in them is no longer there. You may have Jesus more than them. Instead of you looking for Jesus somewhere else, in the man of God, in man, in mere human being, look Jesus inside you. He is with you. Just call upon him. And he will answer you. God is great. He sent his son to die for you, 